What's up guys, this is Anna Crossover, I'm back with another episode of What If Naruto Was The Red Flash Part 14 and if you did enjoy this video, give it a like for more crossover fictions and if you're new to my channel and like my content, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more crossover fictions with a with twist. Now let's begin this new video. Iceberg Lounge, Gotham City a line of patrons was formed on the sidewalks by red velvet ropes, while bouncers and security kept them under control. Cars rolled up as valets handed out tickets and parked them. The brilliant spotlights shone on the neon umbrella symbol and name above it, the Iceberg Lounge. Naruto and Jiraiya got out of a black vehicle that had driven up to the curb. Jiraiya changed into business-like attire, holstering and concealing a knife and pistol. They approached the bouncer, who held a clipboard, name? Naruto Namikaze, I'm here to meet Thomas Elliot, Naruto said as the bouncer checked his list. Of course, right this way, the bouncer said as he led them into the club, which struck them with its sheer size and grandeur. It was massive, with a large iceberg in the middle of a large pond. There were platforms on the iceberg where a live band was performing. The club had several floors with tables and booths, servers moving dutifully from each table to the kitchen, and a massive bar on the first floor. Whistles. This club may be run by a criminal, but it's swanky, Naruto observed as the bouncer led them through the club and up the stairs to the private balcony rooms. They were designated for Gotham's rich and criminally inclined elite. They came to a halt outside a room where Thomas Elliot was conversing with Oswald Cobblepot. A slim man of ordinary height with pale skin and brilliant blue eyes. His nose was slightly pointed and beak-like. He was wearing a fancy and expensive purple and black jacket with black striped trousers and a monocle over his right eye while holding an umbrella. Judging by how he was leaning on the umbrella and his peculiar posture, it was easy to conclude he had a leg injury and used the umbrella as a kind of cane. 2. The bouncer said, Mr. Elliot, Mr. Namikaze is here to see you. Excellent timing, John, and thanks to Oswald for allowing us to use one of your private rooms, Elliot said to the bird-themed crook. As always, Mr. Elliot, Penguin smiled as he limped over to Naruto. Mr. Namikaze, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Oswald Cobblepot, and I own this establishment. Jiraiya half expected Naruto to walk away as Penguin extended his hand, but he played his part and shook his hand while remaining posed and oblivious. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Cobblepot. This is a very fine establishment you have here. I never expected to see an actual iceberg in a club. That's quite a feat, and judging by the long line of patrons you have outside, you are a very good business owner. Well, to be a good business owner, or more accurately, a good club owner, requires a good deal of ingenuity. A vision that most people can't seem to comprehend. I imagine as a scientist you must have a vision that others would consider ridiculous, Penguin pointed out. That's a fair point. Well, from one visionary to another, thank you for hosting us, Naruto replied, and Penguin grinned back. My pleasure, if there's anything else you require, please let me know. Penguin then exited the room, leaving Naruto, Jiraiya, Thomas Elliot and his security team, as well as two club waitresses, servers, alone. Thank you for meeting me, Mr. Namikaze. Please take a seat across from me, Elliot said, motioning to the couch. Is there anything I can get you? Champagne, whiskey, scotch? Mr. Cobblepot has a wide selection. Um, sure. That'd be great. Nothing too strong because there's still some work to do tonight and I'd rather be able to think clearly for that, Naruto joked. Pardon me for interrupting, Mr. Elliot, but why did you request this meeting? Well, I was hoping to discuss a possible business opportunity the two of us could pursue together, he explained as one of the servers poured him a class of scotch and another handed Naruto and Jiraiya glasses of champagne. The old spy took a quick sniff and couldn't detect any hints of poison or other bad things, so he gave Naruto a look that said it was safe. By the way, congratulations on your achievements, I never imagined the day when an entire city could be powered by a single machine, you've accomplished a lot for someone so young. Thank you, Naruto said, sipping champagne. It was a big day for everyone at Star Labs, and it's a good indicator of where we can go moving forward. Something I'd be happy to help with. On behalf of Elliot Estates, I'd like to extend an olive branch so the two of us could work together. I have considerable development resources in Gotham and other cities that we'll be able to use to expand Star Labs facilities, and I have other friends in the business sector who would be more than willing to discuss business opportunities. Naruto was unaware of Sioni's industries except for the fact that its owner, Roman Sioni's, is a suspected gang leader who goes by the alias Black Mask. Sisko's files on all of Gotham's supervillains are quite extensive. Based on his friendship with Penguin and work with Sionis, Thomas Elliot was either a criminal or in business with them. That was all he needed to know. 
That is a very generous offer, Mr. Elliot, Naruto replied, but I am meeting with Wayne Enterprises in a more official capacity to discuss possible business ventures. Which I'm fully aware of, but to be perfectly honest, working with Wayne Enterprises won't help you in the long run. Bruce is a dear friend of mine, but he's more concerned with his partying ways and growing litter of orphans than running a multi-billion dollar company. I, on the other hand, have my sights firmly set on expanding, it's up to you to decide if this is motivated by professional jealousy or a deep-seated animosity. I admire your determination, Mr. Elliot, but like all scientists, I prefer to wait for facts before making my final decision. Naruto took another sip of champagne before setting the glass down. Thank you for the meeting and the drink, but it would be preferable if this information could be provided in writing. I completely understand that, which is why I already have something planned, Elliot said as his bodyguard handed him a large file. Take your time going over it and making sure everything is in order, but I think you'll see that I'm correct. We'll see. Thank you for tonight, Mr. Elliot. Naruto rose up to leave as Jiraiya finished his drink. Are you sure I can't persuade you to stay a little longer? Mr. Kabopat has arranged some. A knock on the door was quickly answered, and several scantily clad women entered. Private entertainment for us. Two of the women approached Naruto and Jiraiya and began flirting. The old perv was having a good time, while Naruto was not. That won't be necessary, Mr. Elliot. We have another obligation to get to at the moment. Until next time. Naruto walked to the door but saw Jiraiya was too entranced by the women, so he was literally dragged by the collar out of the room. Oh, come on, kid. Can't I go back in there? Jiraiya asked, only for Naruto to keep dragging him towards the exit. Sure, if you're okay with hepatitis? Naruto joked as a waitress winked at Jiraiya, energizing his attempts. As a result, Naruto had to grab him by the neck and drag him outside to the curb. What the hell, kid? You've got a girlfriend, so why not let the single man get some action? Not here. I don't need Elliot or Penguin getting any kind of ammunition against me, including my godfather, bodyguard getting down and dirty in a club owned by a criminal, Naruto said as the two walked down the street to talk. Alright, what do you think? I think that entire thing was a prime example of how horrible people have inherited too much power, Naruto stated bluntly. Clearly, he has a grudge against Bruce Wayne, aside from wanting to outbusiness him. That's right, and did you catch that name drop during your conversation? Jiraiya continued. First the penguin, then the black mask, who's next? The Riddler. Naruto posed rhetorically. Anyway, clearly dealing with Elliot Estates is out, which brings me back to the Wayne Enterprises meeting tomorrow morning. Anything I should know? At the moment, no but something tells me you'll eventually find out a very interesting similarity you and Bruce Wayne share. Jiraiya cryptically foretold him as they walked down the street past a couple of dudes who discreetly began to follow them. Did you see them, kid? Yup, five behind us and three coming at us. How do you want to play this because I could use some exercise? Naruto wondered. I'll go on your go, Jiraiya said as the three men approaching them pulled out knives. Don't move. Wallets, phones, everything now, one of them said. Yeah, you guys really don't want to do this, Naruto implored only for one of the hoodlums to pull out a revolver and point it at his head, perhaps you do. You heard him. Naruto was warned only to see the fancy, thousand dollar watch on the gunman's wrist along with the gold and sapphire ring on his finger. What's more interesting is that he recognized the Rolex. Dot and who owned it. Hand everything over. Something tells me you don't need it. Given you're wearing a fancy watch and that expensive ring, I'd say you have more than enough money or at least someone with deep pockets who sent you after me. I think I know who, but he made one mistake, he should have sent more. Naruto immediately disarmed the gunman, kneeing him in the groin before following that with a knee to the face and elbow to the back of the head. Jiraiya threw double elbows at two of the attackers, knocking them unconscious. He caught a third's fist and broke it before throwing him to the ground and knocking him out with a right hook. He sidestepped a knife before grabbing the attacker's wrist and throwing him into a fire hydrant. Naruto took out two of the attackers with quick strikes to the face, chest, and groin before doing a leg sweep and knocking both onto their backsides. He deflected a knife to the back before grabbing his attacker from behind, suplexing him and breaking his ankle for good measure. The last attacker was trembling in his shoes as he noticed Naruto glaring at him. Boo. He turned to flee, only to run right into Jiraiya's fist and crash to the ground like a sack of potatoes. Jiraiya smiled and said, that was fun. It was. I needed that. Naruto walked over to the gunman and kicked him onto his back before pressing his shoe against his neck. He knelt and took off the gunman's watch before giving him one last glare. He should have sent more troops. Naruto kicked him across the face and knocked him out, only for Jiraiya to give him a look. 
do you want me to call the cops, or should I? The GCPD arrived soon after to arrest the attackers, but they said nothing and immediately hired a lawyer. Naruto and Jiraiya explained everything to the uniformed police officers. That's when Naruto observed a shadowy figure on a rooftop watching them. He couldn't see much detail because it was dark and far away, but someone was watching them. Line break XXXXX Wayne Enterprises, Gotham City a private limo arrived outside the Wayne Enterprises headquarters to drop off its guests in front of the building, where several security guards and a Wayne Enterprises receptionist awaited them. Naruto, Jiraiya, and Gara stepped out after one of the guards opened the door. All of them were dressed up in expensive business suits, courtesy of Naruto, who was also carrying a briefcase and backpack containing everything he needed for the meeting. Mr. Namikaze, welcome to Wayne Enterprises, if you'll follow me, the receptionist said as she led them inside, where they could see the building for themselves. It was the perfect blend of past and present designs that exemplified everything Wayne Enterprises stands for. Marble busts of previous Waynes lined the hallway, along with various paintings of the city in the past and high-tech monitors playing typical company puff videos and still images of cities. Employees went about their business as usual, using high-tech ID cards to go past security terminals, with Wayne Enterprise security personnel keeping an eye on everything. The receptionist checked them in at the front desk and checked their phones and digital devices for security. Makes sense as you don't want anyone strolling in and grabbing any data. Luckily enough he didn't need his phone and security examined his stuff for the meeting, so he was good. He was then escorted into a private elevator that took him to floor 85, where the largest meeting room was located. It was typically used for important meetings between the board of Wayne Enterprises and outside investors, as well as internal meetings between the board, Lucius Fox, and Bruce Wayne. When they arrived at their assigned floor, the receptionist and security led them into the office of Lucius Fox, acting CEO of Wayne Enterprises. Lucius Fox, a younger man who resembled him and Bruce Wayne, awaited them. Your guests have arrived, Mr. Fox and Mr. Wayne. 3. Thank you very much. That'll be all today. Mr. Fox told her as she and the security escort left. Mr. Namikaze, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please, Mr. Fox, the pleasure is all mine. From one scientist and engineer to another, I can say this has made some of my childhood dreams come true. Your paper and work on pneumatic actuated building is very impressive, Naruto replied, causing Lucius to chuckle. And all your work at Star Labs is equally impressive. A young man with a mind like yours is going to put Wayne Enterprises out of business. Which is a good thing we're having this meeting today. This is my son, Luke Fox, our current head of R&D. Lucius introduced the two as Naruto shook his hand. It's a pleasure to meet you, Luke said. This is my bodyguard, Jiraiya and this is Gara Suna, our head of human resources. Naruto introduced his buddies who shook hands and made polite. It's good to see you again, Mr. Wayne. You as well, and thank you for coming a little earlier today, Bruce said. All right, is there something going on that we should be aware of? Naruto inquired. We're not sure at the moment, but something to keep in mind. Yesterday, the board received a message from Blake Carrington of Carrington Atlantic about strengthening business relations in Gotham and with Wayne Enterprises. When I informed him of our meeting with you, he seemed rather adamant that he be able to join the meeting and discuss his proposition. Normally, that wouldn't be allowed, but Mr. Carrington is familiar with many members of the board and they allowed it. Don't worry, I was expecting this, Naruto replied, which caught them off guard. Mr. Carrington showed up in Central City and pushed back my meeting with the mayor because he wanted to buy Star Labs from me. He made that offer because he's afraid of the competition and everything his company stands to lose if I succeed. This is him trying to derail my future plans. Luke observed, you don't sound concerned. That's because I'm not. Carrington Atlantic has been around for decades, but I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Tricks I think you'll enjoy. Naruto stated confidently, it's time to start the war. They were led to the boardroom and provided with refreshments until the rest of the board arrived for the meeting. Naruto, Jiraiya, and Gara sat together as Bruce, Lucius, and Luke took their seats as they arrived. The board members all sat down and soon Blake Carrington and his daughter walked in with their security team. Fallon threw him a knowing glance and Naruto winked back as everyone sat down. Thank you everyone for being here today. No doubt we'll have a lot to go through, so we'll try and get through everything as smoothly as possible. I would just like to take a moment to thank our two guests of honor, Mr. Naruto Namikaze of Star Labs and Mr. Blake Carrington of Carrington Atlantic. Wayne Enterprises is eager to coordinate a business partnership with either of these companies and further expand in all territories. Mr. Carrington, you have the floor first. Lucius told him. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Blake stood up and pressed a button on the wall, closing the window shutters so he could play the short video he had prepared for them. 
Carrington Atlantic is here today to help usher in a new era for Wayne Enterprises. Both companies have been around for centuries, and their pull can be felt around the world. Wayne Enterprises is the world's largest multinational conglomerate that is helping to reshape the world, and Carrington Atlantic would like to help with that. While Fallon handed each member of the board a written proposition document, Blake Carrington pushed a clicker and a projector displayed information on Carrington Atlantic and how amazing they were doing. Carrington Atlantic's business is power itself. From the moment every single one of you woke up this morning and probably before, Carrington Atlantic has had a hand in getting you there. From charging your phone, making breakfast to the fuel that goes in your car, Carrington Atlantic is there every single step of the way. It's a company and a name you can trust to be there for you, and we would like to do the same for Wayne Enterprises in a partnership. We control the most profitable and abundant oil fields all over the country and around the world. Despite other company claims of such, oil is still power that the world has used for centuries and there is a reason for that. The Talberton Group alone requests over $100 million of oil for their refineries. I would like to cut out the middleman and give Wayne Enterprises private access to our power. I believe there is a lot we can accomplish together because in business, you trust a name and a company that has proven itself. The business world is not for young dreamers who will learn as they go. Naruto disguised his smirk as those final two statements were directed at him directly. Blake continued with his business proposition of opportunities and benefits, and judging by the smiles on the faces of several board members, those were the ones he had in his pocket. To be honest, his entire speech was dull. If this is what businessmen do on a daily basis, I feel sorry for the people who have to listen to his nonsense, Naruto said to Gara, who laughed. The whole business presentation went on for about another 15 minutes before Blake made his final statement. I know Star Labs will present you with an interesting proposal today, but I know you'll make the right decision and trust a company that has proven to be reliable. As Blake turned off the projector, the board members applauded. Naruto clapped as well merely out of manners. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. The board and I have some thinking to do regarding your proposal. Lucius said. Blake sat down next to his daughter, smiling, believing he had put the final nail in the coffin. Mr. Namikaze, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Naruto stood up and walked over to the front of the table, where he placed a hologram projector. Gara did the same on the other side before handing out Star Labs business proposal paperwork. Good morning, board members of Wayne Enterprises. Thank you all for agreeing to be here today. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Naruto Namikaze, co-owner and lead scientist of Star Labs. I imagine many of you were expecting Harrison Wells to be here today and I'm sorry for those who are disappointed he is not here. As we scientists like to say, disappointment is probably the one definitive answer in the universe. His little science joke drew chuckles and laughs which was a good thing. Naruto couldn't speak in front of large groups, but these smaller cases were fine. Jiraiya winked at him, and he winked back. Many of you can guess why Star Labs is here today for this meeting and it's in regard to the recent success with the arc reactor. As we speak, Central City is essentially the only green city in the entire world. That is part of it but that's not the only reason I am here. As Mr. Carrington put it, Wayne Enterprises is helping to reshape the world, which is a philosophy that Star Labs share as well. The scientific and technological advance research laboratories were founded on the principle of advancing the cause of science. To change how people think about science, unconnected to the government or any kind of business ventures but just to change the world and explore what could be done. Now I know that the idea of working with a laboratory that is unconnected to any kind of business venture seems like the wrong choice to make in business and in most cases that would be true. But not today. All of you are wondering what a 23-year-old scientist who has no business degree or business experience have to offer that sounds appealing. As a scientist, I have that solution. And that solution, the future. Naruto turned out the lights and clicked a button on the projector, activating the hologram field, which quickly displayed a detailed and captivating vision of the cosmos, leaving everyone speechless. Oh, no hold on, that's the universe, my mistake, let me. Naruto joked as if it were an accident, but it was a ploy to get their attention. He then changed it to a large tower in a city that was alive. Hologram people and cars moved around, but the tower with Star Labs at the top was at the epicenter. There is the future. Interesting, isn't it? I bet none of you were expecting this today. What you see before you is the first ever hard light holographic system in human history. What was once science fiction is now just science, courtesy of Star Labs. He looked around and saw that everyone on the board was amazed, including Lucius, Luke, and Bruce, while Blake was both amazed and frustrated. Just like in the movies, hard light holograms are quite awe-inspiring, aren't they? 
Naruto moved his hand forward and picked up one of the buildings and began to mess with it. Everyone was riveted as he not only waved his hands in the light, but the hologram actually responded to his touch. He opened the building, swiped down a hologram list of other buildings, and replaced it with a Wayne Enterprises tower. Although they take some getting used to, go ahead and see for yourself. Bruce was the first to do it and grabbed a small hologram car and to his amazement, he could actually interact with it. It was as if he held it in his hands. The rest of the board agreed, and even Fallon wanted to participate. Just like when you were kid playing with toys. That is one of the benefits of being a scientist, our imagination is unlimited. If there is a problem to be solved, with enough time, we can solve it. I'm not going to tread into the points I made during my previous press conference as I'm sure you're all aware of that already. I'd rather focus on what else Star Labs has to offer. Naruto waved his hand as the diorama of the city vanished and was replaced with the arc reactor design along with various other designs, inventions, and revolutionary advancements. Star Labs hologram workstations are just the beginning of what we have to offer. There are numerous patents, designs, and projects that Star Labs has been working on for months that will help revolutionize the world and usher us into the new millennium. Now, with Mr. Carrington's point of oil and power being the driving force for centuries, but as the saying goes, all things must come to an end. As the hologram field changed to reveal data and information on something called Sterium, Naruto reached into his pocket and produced a silver chunk of metal. This is Sterium. Yes, it's a very unusual name that's right on the nose and could have been better but it can be changed in the future. At first glance there doesn't seem to be anything to this. Just a silver-colored chunk of rock. The same could be said for its natural equivalent, tantalum. Naruto handed it to one of the board members who began looking it over. For those unfamiliar with the element, tantalum is essentially the miracle child that ushered in the modern era. Without it, I doubt most of everything we've come to enjoy as commonplace wouldn't exist. But like most elements that are mined and highly prized, it's not without its faults. The mining process itself is dangerous and the current suppliers of the elements are in areas of conflict such as Africa and China. That's where sterium comes into play. A man-made element that can be used exactly as tantalum but made in a lab and more importantly, made by using the arc reactor muon energy. Introducing the energy into silicon and carbide elements and then superheat it to over 1000 degrees Kelvin, you get sterium. It is able to do everything tantalum products are able to without the necessary needs for mining or processing and Star Labs controls everything. And possibly Wayne Enterprises can help with that. I know this is a lot to take in so please read the proposal you've been given and come to your best decision. Blake Carrington and Carrington Atlantic offered a familiar path, a path that works now for the present. Star Labs would rather offer a path to the future and I would like Wayne Enterprises to help with that. Thank you. The round of applause he got was far louder than Blake Carrington's and who could blame him? Just the arc reactor alone would have made any board of directors salivate in anticipation but add in the holographic projector, arc reactor batteries, and sterium and you'd have to be an idiot to refuse his proposal. It was a veritable gold mine worth billions. Naruto smiled as he saw the happy faces on the board of directors who were giddily anticipating a new payday. Jiraiya and Gara were proud of him for standing his ground, and Blake's unhappy expression only added to the sweetness. Thank you, Mr. Namikaze. That was a very insightful presentation, Lucia said. I think the board and I will take some time to discuss the prospects with Mr. Wayne before we give you and Mr. Carrington our answer. Of course. Take all the time you need. Naruto replied as he packed up the hologram projectors into his bag. Well done, kid. That was amazing. Jiraiya told him. Naruto rubbed the back of his neck and took a deep breath to relax. Thank you. I think I did okay. More than alright. Carrington isn't exactly happy about what happened. Gara cast a glance over at Blake Carrington, who was chatting with several board members, attempting to discourage them from siding with the Star Labs agreement, but he wasn't having the best of luck. And those were the board members who worked for him. Looks like my job is going to pick up soon. As Bruce Wayne approached, Naruto handed Jiraiya the bag and said, soon enough. Naruto, that was an impressive presentation. Where do you find the time to work on all of your designs and inventions? The work is much easier when you don't look at it like work and it's something you love to do. And time flies after that. Naruto answered. I understand that everything in my presentation may appear to be typical scientist grandstanding, but Star Labs can deliver on its promises, however, having assistance in developing and distributing its promises is a different story. Well, I think it's safe to say that we'll be doing business in the future, Bruce assured him. Mr. Carrington may have some of the board members in his pocket, but even they're smart enough to see a good opportunity when it presents itself. I believe that Star Labs and Wayne Enterprises can achieve great things together. 
Naruto shook his hand and said, that I agree with. I'm hosting an event for the Wayne Foundation tonight at my family manor, and not only will the board members be there, but other high-powered members of the global business community as well. Shall I add you three to the list? Bruce asked. That would be great, it would be our honor, Naruto said. Excellent. I'll have the information sent to your hotel room. Bruce bid them farewell for the time being. He wasn't the only one leaving as Blake Carrington and his daughter were leaving as well. Blake wasn't in a good mood, to put it mildly. Careful, daddy. You keep that grimace on your face for much longer and it'll stay that way, Fallon joked. This isn't the time for your jokes, Fallon. It couldn't have gone any worse, Blake said as the elevator arrived. Blake, Fallon, and their security team entered the elevator alone. Oh, I don't know. I can think of a few more worst case scenarios, she commented. I gave that board everything Carrington Atlantic has to offer. Money and private access to all our global oil fields but all they're talking about is what Star Labs has to offer. How the hell is any of that even possible? I mean, I met that kid a few days ago and he's already designed enough products for the next 10 years, Blake commented. Clearly, he's a motivated scientist and engineer, Fallon said rhetorically, but how do you plan to eclipse a company that is literally promising the future? It's not the company I have to deal with, it's the owners, that kid has no idea who he's messing with, but he will soon, Blake said in a tone that made Fallon concerned about what he might do. XXXXX line break Naruto, Jiraiya, and Gara returned to the suite to unwind and celebrate after the business meeting. They ordered room service while Naruto was out on the balcony to phone Linda. Central City News, Linda Park here, and before you say anything, please know that if this conversation is about my relationship with Naruto Namikaze, I'm hanging up, Linda said, slightly annoyed. Then I'm not sure how this conversation is going to go, Naruto joked. I bet no one has ever said that someone should have taken my offer to come to Gotham. I know and I'm sorry. Honestly, since I've been at work the past few days, all I've been getting are phone calls about us. Guess the world wants to know how we met. It's like they're trying to turn us into the next Kim and Kanye, she explained. There are so many things wrong with that sentence that I don't even want to go there, I apologize for all the trouble. It's fine. Like I told Fallon, I have tough skin. Besides, I don't care about them. Linda typed at her computer before walking over to the printer to retrieve something. I'm not sure whether to be pleased or offended. Perhaps a little of both. That's how I'd feel if the roles were reversed. I'm so sorry, Linda. Naruto felt terrible for Linda. Stop apologizing, it's not your fault. I'm the one who chose to see and continue to date a famous scientist who is seeking to change the world. I was expecting this kind of drama the moment you told me what you were trying to do. And a little more after we told each other about our powers. I've already turned Larkin down for the office. If I'm going to get an office at this paper, it's going to be because I earned one. Linda assured him. That's my girl, but how would you feel if you started your own paper with some possible blind endorsement from your rich boyfriend in the future? Naruto asked. Well, we'll talk about that when it comes up. Linda joked causing them both to laugh. I'm guessing by your sense of humor that things went well today? I was a little concerned after you told me about the thugs who tried to jump you. The key word there is tried. Honestly, it was a workout if anything, Naruto explained. Blake Carrington arrived with his daughter and pretty much tried to derail my plans for a joint business venture with Wayne Enterprises. He's got some friends on the board and managed to finagle an invite to the meeting. So, Fallon was correct about him trying to take you down before you even started, and how did he do? Linda inquired, only to hear Naruto smirk over the phone. How do you think? All Blake had to offer them was what they already have. I offered them something different and a chance for actual growth. An arc reactor in Gotham, not to mention Wayne Enterprises being the sole business partner to help produce all of Star Labs' patented equipment. This deal will literally make them billions of billions of dollars. Anyone would take that deal. Blake was stewing in his loss after the deal. It was so good to see it a second time. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard this side of you before, wishing failure on others, Linda said. He started this and if his goal is to keep Star Labs from expanding because he's jealous, hates me, or wants to buy me out then so be it. He has no idea who he's messing with, Naruto told her. Linda smirked over the phone, wow, you sound sexy when you get all serious. Naruto joked, oh, don't tempt me, Linda. Anyway, Bruce Wayne believes the deal is almost done, so Wayne Enterprises will continue to assist Star Labs, and he's even invited us to a Wayne Foundation charity event tonight at the Wayne Manor. Really? Now I'm even more upset I didn't come. I'm so proud of you. This is big. Now, make nice with the powerful businessmen, stay away from the supermodels and don't let the Joker get you. Come back to me in one piece. Linda told him. I will. 
Enough about me. What's going on in Central City? Linda informed him, something interesting. It turns out we've got another evil metahuman in the city. Mark Martin. Why does that name sound familiar? Linda reminded him that Clyde and Mark Martin were career robbers who were presumed dead when the particle accelerator exploded. Right, Barry's first metahuman was Clyde, and Joe shot him, so I guess his brother has returned for vengeance, Naruto explained. Pretty much. Sisko's already dubbed him Weather Wizard. Barry's watching Joe and I'm watching over Iris until Sisko finishes his device to stop him. Linda added. Do you need assistance? I can get back to Central City in about an hour. No, we'll be fine. Dr. Wells insisted that we handle it so that your business in Gotham runs smoothly, and we will, so stay relaxed and rub shoulders with the powerful men of the business world, and then come home, Linda insisted. Naruto swore, that's something I can do. Wayne Manor was located outside of the city in the Gotham Palisades, where the Wayne family had lived for generations. Catering trucks and groups of servers diligently moved everything for the party into the manor. Alfred Pennyworth, Bruce's loyal family butler and confidant, instructed them on where to set up everything and kept them away from areas they weren't supposed to be. In particular, he didn't want them to stumble into Master Wayne's study or any area they shouldn't by accident. 4. While that was going on upstairs, a high-tech multi-floored dwelling for the Batman was being built beneath the manor in a secret underground cave system that stretched for miles, even to the lake on the grounds. Rows of monitors and an advanced computer system that was beyond anything on the market for years was occupied by a woman with red hair in a wheelchair while an armory and training area on the second floor was being occupied by two young men who were sparring. On the opposite side of the room were circular metal tubes of importance with a ragged, cut-up, and scarred suit carrying a spear hung in recollection. The phrases ha ha the jokes on you were spray painted on the costume. On the ground floor, near the water, there was a fully operational garage with several armored motorcycles and a large vehicle that looked like a cross between a Lamborghini and an armored personnel carrier. A paved road led up to a secret path beneath the lake, and nearby was a high-tech armored hoverjet. 5. The main elevator to the manor descended until it stopped and out walked Bruce Wayne in a suit. He walked through his lair and made his way up to the computers where Barbara Gordon was busy working on something. Oracle, the Dark Knight's information hub, is the daughter of police commissioner James Gordon and the erstwhile vigilante Batgirl. Her red hair was pulled back into a bun, and she was dressed casually in jeans and a purple Gotham City University sweatshirt. She pushed her glasses up as she continued focusing on her work. 6. How the party prep going? Barbara asked as Bruce walked up to her. Fine, Alfred has it under control. I feel sorry for him every time you host one of these things. Kate left you a message by the way. You should call her back when you have a chance. Barbara informed him. I'll do it when the satellite lines up to where she is. I'm surprised she stayed there training for so long, but knowing Kate, I should have expected it. Anyway, what did you find? Bruce asked, looking over the data she'd gathered. A lot. There's been a lot of chatter throughout the city the past couple of days from both the GCPD and their C's. Something's got the criminals of Gotham agitated and mobilizing, and I reckon it has to do with your future business partner, she explained. Anyone in particular? Bruce wanted something specific to act on. Nothing concrete. There was some chatter from the Iceberg Lounge but that's probably about his meeting with Tommy Elliott, she explained. Anything else? Nothing concrete though there are some leads about Crane making a move and he's not the only one. I've gotten whispers from just about everyone, something's got them agitated. I'll have the kids run down some leads to make it easier once they're done playing. Barbara and Bruce looked over at the training area at the two young men sparring. Both were shirtless, exposing numerous scars and bruises, and they were wielding different weapons. The older of the two was using two Eskrima fighting sticks while the younger was using a bow staff and both were blindfolded. Despite their lack of vision, they continued to spar and managed to land a lucky blow against each other before the older one backflipped into a corkscrew spin and threw his Eskrima sticks, which ricocheted off the floor and at his opponent, who blocked them with his staff. That left him open to a flying scissor takedown where the older put him in an arm lock and had him at his mercy. 7. Damn it, the younger one exclaimed in defeat as he removed his blindfold before being helped off the ground. Timothy Jackson Drake was the newest member of the Bat family as the latest Robin. I'll get you next time, Dick. His opponent removed his blindfold and stood up. This was Richard Grayson, the adopted son of Bruce Wayne, the first Robin and now Nightwing the Vigilante. Sure, Tim, keep telling yourself that. It's still 15 to 10 in my favor, 16 now. Dick assisted him in getting back on his feet, and the two grabbed towels and water bottles. Dick, get dressed up and take Tim out into the city. 
Oracle will keep an eye on everything here. Something big has happened in Gotham, so find out everything you can, Bruce said. Tim inquired, What about you? I have to stay here tonight for the event. I personally invited Naruto Namikaze, so I'll have to be here, Bruce explained. Something big is brewing and I want to know before it happens. We'll get dressed, Dick said as the two strolled over to the far wall and pushed their hands over individual scanners. When the circular metal tubes were finished, they rotated to reveal armored suits on mannequins. One was black with a domino mask and a blue bird crest on the chest and shoulders. The other was black, red, and yellow with a red R over the heart. XXXXX line break as a swarm of cars and limos arrived at Wayne Manor for the Wayne Foundation Charity Gala, night had descended on Gotham. Of course, the who's who of Gotham's elite and powerful were in attendance, as were board members of Wayne Enterprises and other powerful business people. A horde of paparazzi were outside, taking photos like it was a red carpet event but in Gotham it was. A black limo pulled up in front of the manor before the driver exited and opened the passenger door, revealing Naruto, Jiraiya, and Gara dressed to the nines. Gara and Jiraiya looked dashing in their tuxes, though Jiraiya was still carrying his gun and knife for safety. Naruto was dressed in the same style as Daniel Craig's James Bond in Casino Royale. He was wearing the dinner jacket he wore during the poker tournament. Before they entered the manor, the paparazzi took photos of him and a reporter asked him some questions, which he gladly answered. When they walked in, they drew everyone's attention. The men whispered about them while the women smiled and waved. They entered the manor's main hall, where a live band was playing music, servers carried trays of drinks and finger foods, and people gathered around small tables to converse. Wow, I'm curious how much this place costs, Gara said. That's an answer we probably don't want to know, Naruto said when he noticed two beautiful women walk by who winked at them. And as could be predicted Jiraiya immediately began to go gaga but Naruto stopped him from walking away. Look, I know this is a great opportunity for us tonight and a great party, but I don't want us thrown out of here or causing a scene that destroys the hard work Dr. Wells and I have been building or spoils any future growth. So, Jiraiya, do your best to keep it down to an acceptable level of perversion tonight. Jiraiya didn't seem to catch any of that as he watched another stunning supermodel walk by. She was most likely the date of one of the businessmen present. Uh huh, sure. To catch his attention, Naruto struck him upside the head. I'm serious, I don't want you getting thrown out or arrested because you hit on some dude's wife and possibly screwed up a potential business client, alright. I'm sure there are plenty of single women who will happily kiss you if you turn down the perversion and act normal. And why am I taking advice from you again? Jiraiya said only for Naruto to stare at him. Because I'm the only one of us who actually has a girlfriend and is in a happy relationship, Naruto pointed out. Gara added, he's got you there. I'm serious. If you actually tone it down, you might be more appealing and actually get lucky. Naruto pleaded with him. All right, all right. I'll tone it down and double check for wedding rings before I work the magic. Jiraiya pleaded. Knowing you, that's all I can ask for, and as a bonus, I relieve you of your guard duty tonight, so go enjoy yourself, Naruto said, only for Jiraiya to vanish, but if you do get a date, find your own hotel room. Well, if you don't need me, I'm going to scope out the buffet, Gara said as he walked over to him. A server walked by with a plate of champagne that Naruto enthusiastically took. He was a little out of place in this affair, but it was a decent insight of his future. He walked through the party and was stopped by some businessmen, venture capitalist, politicians and their trophy wives who wanted to chat about his recent successes and possible business ventures. Now he was starting to wonder if Dr. Wells didn't want to come because of this, he could be quite crafty. His pocket was literally brimming with business cards from prospective businesses or politicians who wanted to work with him after approximately two hours of talking, downing glasses of champagne, and eating some finger snacks. Honestly, he felt like he needed a lobotomy after that ordeal. He walked to the bar to buy a scotch for the taste since none of this alcohol wasn't impacting him which kind of sucked. When he heard the clack of heels getting closer and someone joining him at the bar, he leaned against the bar and drank a few swallows. Martini, please. I wasn't expecting you to be here tonight, Fallon. Naruto turned to see her in a fancy and probably expensive dress. I figured after what happened this morning that your dad wouldn't be in the mood to play charity. He isn't, which is why I'm here alone, Fallon explained only for Naruto to notice her driver about 10 feet away. Well, mostly by myself. I'm surprised your bodyguard isn't by your side. I gave him the night off because I think there's only so much business talk he can take, Will said as he finished his drink. What brings you by? Another warning. My father is on the warpath. Honestly, I've never seen him this angry. Fallon told him. 
I figured after what happened today, you'd be concerned, Naruto observed. I think it might be a good idea to keep your bodyguard extra close from now on, or even hire a private security team, Fallon added. I have an inkling of what his threats are. Thanks again for the heads up, Naruto said. You must really want to stay on my good side for the future. I'm Carrington Atlantic's head of acquisitions, and I know a good opportunity when I see it, and as I said, I want to stay on your good side, Fallon reminded him. So, if in the eventuality that I do buy Carrington Atlantic I'll remember your help and place you as CEO. Naruto added, drawing an odd look from Fallon. When I do expand, I don't plan to buy companies or firms and gut them like anyone in my position would. Any company I purchase will officially be under the Star Labs umbrella. All that entails is them changing up their business a little to fit with what Star Labs wants to accomplish. Which means that I'll be assigning people to watch over said companies and report to me. Ah. Which means if you buy Carrington Atlantic, you'll be assigning someone to run the company in your best interests. Color me impressed. Remember me fondly when that happens. Fallon bid him goodbye to mingle with the other businessmen and women at the party. Bruce was portraying Bruce Wayne, the billionaire playboy philanthropist at his own party, complete with a beautiful model on his arm. He was suave and dashing, exactly the opposite of what you'd expect a masked vigilante to be, which was the point. When his phone in his pocket vibrated, he checked it to see the bat symbol on the screen, which indicated that it was Oracle. Bruce excused himself and walked down the hall to a room that was empty before he answered. Oracle, did Nightwing and Robin find anything? Yeah, they tracked a lead down to a warehouse Crane was operating out of, where he had over 30 hired thugs watching over 20 hostages, she continued. It's unusual for Crane to take hostages, what did he want? Bruce inquired. He wasn't holding them for ransom. They were all captured so Crane's men could take their place. They work for the Millennium Events Food and Catering Company, which is also responsible for working your party tonight, Oracle explained. Whatever Crane has in mind has something to do with your charity event tonight. Right. I'm heading down to the cave now. Get my suit ready. Where are Tim and Dick? Bruce inquired as he made his way to his study through the mansion. They're on their way back now. They should be here by the time you're suited up, Oracle replied watching the trackers in their suits rush across Gotham. Bruce checked the hallway twice before entering his private study and approaching the old grandfather clock. He opened it and drew one of the pendulums, which was followed by a series of tumbles and locks, similar to a safe. It then slid to the side to expose an elevator. I've already sent a message to the police, and they're on their way. They won't make it in time, Bruce said as the elevator doors closed. Naruto sat at the bar, sipping a beer and people watching. He noticed Gara snacking on some finger snacks as Jiraiya was making moves on another girl. You'd think that after the 10th strikeout, he'd give up, but he was tenacious. Perhaps he'd have more luck with number 11. Naruto's people watching drew his attention to some strange incidents, mostly involving some of the kitchen employees. Some of them would gather around near food or drink carts, and they weren't very good at passing food or drinks around. He even witnessed one sneaking a gulp of liquor. Naruto noticed some tattoos hidden by his shirt collar as a catering waiter passed by with a drink tray. That wouldn't normally raise an eyebrow, but the suspicious bulge in his side pocket did. Naruto finished his beer and approached Gara. Something was wrong when the sand metahuman spotted Naruto's look. Naruto, what's up? I think this event is about to be robbed. Go tell Jiraiya. We need to get these people out of here, he said quietly. Gara nodded and rushed over to Jiraiya, who had failed yet again with another woman while Naruto approached Fallon, who was speaking with a representative from Cord Enterprises. Fallon, I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation but I think it might be a good idea to possibly take this conversation elsewhere. Fallon explained, really, it was just getting good. Is there something wrong, Mr. Namikaze? The representative inquired when Naruto noticed one of the catering staff reach into his belt and nod to the others. Everyone get down. Naruto cried as one of the disguised weight workers dropped a flashbang bomb onto a table, it blew up, causing a tremendous ringing sound, which was followed by bullets from handguns and submachine guns. Everyone jumped to their feet as 20 disguised waitstaff stripped off their suits to reveal dirty brown shirts emblazoned with the Scarecrow symbol, indicating they worked for Jonathan Crane aka the Scarecrow. As the Scarecrow gang put their guns on the hostages and immediately subdued or killed the Crow and Wayne security team, Naruto stepped in front of Fallon. All right, everyone shut up or you're going to get a bullet, yelled the ringleader as he fired a few more rounds from his Mac 10 for good measure, scaring the piss out of the hostages. Now, I'm sure you all know how this works. You hand over all your money and jewelry or you'll end up in the morgue. Meanwhile, those with large bank accounts will call their bankers and transfer everything to the account number we give you. 
anyone who takes too long or irritates us, gets a bullet. The partygoers immediately handed over their valuables, while others got on the phone and followed orders. Naruto took note of the gunmen's positions around the room and knew he could easily take them out, but only if he used his powers. Gara and Jiraiya could aid but he couldn't only do so much without utilizing his powers in view of everyone. He needed assistance, and he received it when he noticed two masked vigilantes moving past the windows. He got the direct gaze of one of them dressed in black and red armor with a small cape. Naruto began to sign and gesture to the ceiling in a subtle manner, and the figure nodded before he and the other moved. Fallon, take a few slow and quiet steps back to your driver, and when everything goes wrong, get as many people as you can to the door and get out of here, he said quietly. When the ringleader saw Naruto and approached him, Fallon replied, Naruto, what's going on? Well, Luki here boys, we've got a celebrity in the house. Fallon took a step back as the ringleader focused on Naruto, who was as calm as could be. Said ringleader took out a Glock pistol and got as threatening as he could be. You know, every other rich douchebag and bitch in this stupid place is cowering in their designer shoes and doing what we said but not you. You think you're better than them? Most of them, yes, but I've been in these kinds of situations before, and it either scars you for life or makes you stronger, so I guess I got stronger, Naruto said, eliciting a snicker from the ringleader, who looked around at his friends in amazement. He looked over at Jiraiya and Gara, who both nodded, ready to battle on the signal. You're funny, kid. I'll admit that. And you're smart too but not that smart. So, you hand over everything you have or else you won't live to tomorrow. The ringleader warned him, placing his gun right in Naruto's face. Naruto peered up and saw the three shadows gliding above the glass ceiling. He looked around the room at the twenty armed goons and knew it was time to act. Would it be alright if I say one thing before handing over my fortune? Naruto inquired. Sure, kid. Amuse me. You never want to put your gun right in someone's face because it gives them the chance to do this. Naruto grabbed the gun, spun around, elbowed him in the back, grabbed his other arm, and threw him into a table before turning around and firing 12 bullets at the guns of 12 of the gunmen, effectively disarming them. Jiraiya took action, drawing his knife and disarming two more gunmen. When the glass ceiling above them shattered and three figures fell down, Gara pushed one food cart into another. Several sharp projectiles were launched into the air, disarming the remaining gunmen. The figures landed on three of the men, knocking them out and exposing themselves to be Robin, Nightwing, and Dot the Batman, in his black and grey armored, cowl and caped outfit. Fighting soon erupted in the manner as Batman, Nightwing, and Robin engaged the goons while everyone else made a run for the exit. Fallon, go! Naruto helped her up, and her driver escorted her as quickly as they could to the door. The distraction allowed the restrained crows and Wayne security men to break free and attack the Scarecrow gang. One lone member tried to attack Naruto only to get his arm broken and thrown into a table. A crow security guard rushed over and started escorting him away. Mr. Namikaze, let's get you to safety, he said as the two made their exit. Because their guns were taken care of, Batman, Nightwing, and Robin confronted the Scarecrow gang in hand-to-hand -hand battle. Batman took out three with brutal yet skillful efficiency as he elbowed one goon in the nose before grappling him to the ground and shattering his leg. Nightwing flipped through the air, launching his twin taser, Eskrima sticks off the walls and into the faces of two goons. Several rapid kicks and taser smacks to the body dispatched them with ease, while Robin dealt with his own goon with his bow staff. Batman fired his grapple gun, yanking a goon to him before close lining him and doing a hammer fist to the gut. Jiraiya dealt with the last remaining goon by elbowing him in the throat and throwing him into a table. The old spy, Metahuman simply shrugged when he saw the bat. You're good for that, right? So, who does these idiots belong to? Jiraiya questioned, kicking one of the downed goons in the gut. Scarecrow, Batman said, looking at Jonathan Crane's twenty defeated minions. Seems like a small fry for Crane, Robin observed. When Gara came out from behind a table and looked around, Nightwing told him, you're right, we're missing something. Where's Naruto? Gara asked as he and Jiraiya looked around and noticed he was gone. While Batman and his friends were fighting, the Crow security guard escorted Naruto down into a wing of Wayne Manor. Naruto inquired, where are you taking me? To a secured exit. My associates have a car waiting for us. The guard replied as they made their way to a side exit of the manor where a nondescript van, not a Crow security personnel carrier, awaited them. I'm sorry, but I'm not getting in that thing, Naruto said. I wasn't going to give you a choice. The crow guard pulled out his gun only for Naruto to kick it away and then kick him in the face. He slammed into the van and threw a punch, which Naruto parried and responded with a gut punch, knee to the groin, 
and his head slammed into the van. Two more of Scarecrow's goons emerged from the van's back doors. One dragged Naruto into the van from behind, while another charged from the front. Naruto kicked the guy in the front before throwing his head back and hitting the goon in the nose. He then stomped on his foot, elbowed him in the gut, kneed him in the face, and threw him headfirst into the back window. The other goon dashed into the driver's seat, while the crow security guard stood up and pulled a spare sidearm from his boot holster. He aimed it at Naruto, but Naruto countered with the same disarm, twist, and elbow to the back before throwing him to the ground and knocking him out with a pistol whip to the face. Thank you, Oliver. Naruto quipped. Oliver was the one who taught him to fight and instilled all his fighting instincts which he honed with his solo training sessions. The disarm and toss was one of the first things Oliver taught him. When Naruto heard footsteps, he realized he was missing one goon. He turned to defend himself, only to be hit in the face with a puff of gas from a modified aerosol gas gun. Whatever gas he was hit with was potent and plentiful. It got in his nose and he inhaled some before blowing the rest out of his face and trying to catch his breath from the fit of coughing. Then it slammed into him like a freight train. His surroundings began to warp around him, to the point where everything outside of his direct line of sight was distorted and resembled something out of Dante's Inferno. He started seeing monsters crawl out of the ground, but right in front of him was himself, or, at the very least, the nightmare version he's been experiencing recently. He was dressed in his impulse suit, but this time it was black and blood red instead of white and crimson. His eyes and lightning turned blood red, his right arm was dripping blood, and he smiled like Hannibal Lecter and Freddy Krueger. What's the matter, Naruto? You don't look so good. His evil persona then hit him in the face with a right and left cross, a punch to the gut, and another punch to the face before throwing him into the van and kneeing him in the gut. Naruto collapsed to the ground in a helpless heap as his evil clone repeatedly kicked him in the gut. Despite his abilities, Naruto was too overcome by dread to think clearly. No, please, I'm not you, I'm not you. Naruto begged to have his wrist broken and his face kicked one more time. His head smacked the side of the van hard and he began to fall in and out of consciousness. You aren't real. Dot you aren't real. I'm am real, and I'm not going anywhere. Dark Naruto warned him with a terrifying smile. All of this was going on in Naruto's head, but in reality, the Scarecrow goon sprayed him with Scarecrow's fear toxin and started beating the crap out of him. Before he could finish him off or drag him into the vehicle, the gravel and pebbles on the ground constricted around Jiraiya's feet as he sprinted forward and slammed the goon's face against the van. Gara then surrounded the other thugs in gravel and pebbles to keep them from moving as he checked on Naruto who wasn't looking good at all. The physical injuries were minor, the issue was how they occurred. Jiraiya looked over Naruto and saw his shivering like he was poisoned or something. That, combined with his babbling about being scared and someone not being real, told him something was seriously wrong. Gara held up a modified gas gun and said, Jiraiya. Oh no Naruto, stay with me, Jiraiya implored him but Naruto wasn't listening. When Batman, Nightwing, and Robin arrived, all he could say was, you're not real, you're not real, you're not real. Jiraiya worriedly cradled his godson's head before turning to face Batman. You owe me, Bruce. Please assist my godson, Jiraiya urged. Batman took one look at the victim and made his decision right there and then. Barbara, Oracle was at the computer, keeping an eye on things, and everything appeared to be in order. The police soon arrived and took Scarecrow's goons into custody though the question as to why Scarecrow would have them attacked needed to be answered. It wasn't exactly Scarecrow's style to act in this manner. Before she could dig into it the ding of the elevator caught her attention along with the shuffle of more than three sets of feet. As she walked down the ramp, she noticed Bruce with his cowl down, leading an older white-haired man into the med bay. The white-haired man was carrying Naruto Namikaze into the med bay. What in the world happened? Put him here. Bruce told Jiraiya as he laid Naruto down on a gurney. Dick, connect him to the EKG, and Tim, analyze his blood as quickly as you can. Jiraiya strapped Naruto down onto the gurney to keep him from moving, and the two wards got to work quickly. Despite being unconscious, he would jerk or struggle as if in a nightmare. Can you explain why you've let two people down here, Batman? Barbara inquired. Later, Barbara, I need you to run an analysis on the toxin used in this, Bruce said as he handed her the modified aerosol gas gun used by Naruto's goon. Crane may have adjusted his formula because he discovered a new method of delivering it. I'm on it, she said, moving it to the lab and getting to work. Dick had finally connected Naruto to the EKG while Bruce was inserting an IV line into his arm. The EKG beeps were extremely fast, as if Naruto was going into cardiac arrest. His heart rate and blood pressure are significantly higher than normal, Dick stated. 
Well, the kid isn't exactly normal, but you probably already know that, don't you Bruce? Jiraiya spared him a glance. However, that's significantly higher than the kid's normal stats. What the hell is going on with him? Crane's fear toxin increased pituitary gland secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is triggering his fight or flight response, but it's supercharging the flight, Bruce explained. Yeah, I'm not sure how well that cure will work in this case, Bruce, Tim said from the computer. His blood shows increased endocrine activity, and if we give him the cure, his system will burn through it in minutes. If the kid heals much faster than a normal person, why isn't he awake? Jiraiya wondered. If his body heals quickly, his mind will heal quickly as well, Barbara said as she wheeled up to the control console and turned on the CT scanner. Naruto's brain and his natural excitability had gone into overdrive after a few seconds of scanning. While his super genius brain was generally lit like a Christmas tree, this time it was lit like the 4th of July. Okay, that's definitely not normal, I don't know how he's alive at this point. It's his super brain, Jiraiya stated, it's usually hyperactive, but I don't think it's supposed to be like that. It's the fear toxin, it's affecting his hyperactive amygdala and further increasing the hallucinogenic process in his brain. Because of his hyperactivity, it's affecting him 10 times harder than a typical victim. Bruce summarized as he injected the fear toxin cure into the IV line. Bruce, his body will burn through that in minutes, Dick warned. I know but we're out of options. Barbara, start synthesizing something to slow down his brain activity. Until then, it's up to your godson. Bruce said Jiraiya. Come on, kid. Fight. Jiraiya grasped Naruto's hand with worry, not wanting to even comprehend the kind of nightmare he would be experiencing. Line break XXXXX, from, Naruto's mindscape, run. Run, 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 faster, faster, don't let him catch you. That's all he could think as he ran as fast as he could all around the world. This hellish landscape of Dante's inferno surrounded him and was all he knew. Withered trees, a crimson inferno sun, and demonic monsters as far as the eye could see but none of that worried him. His terror manifested itself as a blood-red lightning-colored evil version of himself that pursued him like a cat after a mouse. His evil clone was making a game out of this and no matter how hard or how fast he fought the two were equal. The only difference was that his evil clone lacked remorse, sympathy, or any emotion other than rage and sadistic torture. Naruto resorted to fleeing as fast as he could the distant echoes of evil laughter and taunting following him. He had never been so terrified of himself or anyone in his entire life. He ran from Tokyo to Star City and then back to Central City, where he resorted to hiding in alleyways like a rat. He covered his lips to try to silence his hard breathing, but it wasn't working that great and his hopes to catch his breath were quickly destroyed by a whoosh of air and flare of red lightning that appeared at the alley. Naruto wrapped his arms around the wall and covered his mouth to keep his breathing quiet. One, two, I'm coming for you, 3, 4, gonna hurt you more, fix 6, gonna kill you quick, 7, 8, it's far too late, 9, 10. The creepy sing-song nursery rhyme stopped then and there with nothing but utter silence. Naruto was taken aback by the brief silence, is his evil clone still alive? Was he safe? Say hello to me again. His evil clone phased through the wall and showed up behind him before throwing him through the alleyway wall with enough force that he went through the brick wall. Shit. Naruto screamed as his evil clone stepped through the hole in the brick wall and over to his good self. Oh, you don't look so good there, Naruto, don't worry. I'm gonna get you somewhere safe. The evil Naruto hoisted up the original and raced through the city before heading to Star Labs which was run down, half destroyed and looked like Leatherface's vacation home. Naruto was thrown in the air and hit the ground with a thud, adding on to his already growing list of injuries, he was able to raise his head and see that he was in the ruined and blood-stained remains of the cortex. One thing that did stand out where the skulls ordained on pikes. In a flash, evil Naruto appeared in front of him. Nice right? They're little, souvenirs we've picked up over the years. At first it was just a gimmick but, I'm proud to say that no one does what we do better than us. Evil Naruto walked over one of the pikes, revealing the words Captain Cold on the plaque. I know, right? All those little pesky super villains who kept escaping or we locked up in the accelerator ring to never rehabilitate. Well. We solved that problem all together. Cold. Heatwave. The mist. Dot the rest of the nine. Dot and plenty more. But not just our bad guys, oh no Luki here, we've got Ra's al Ghul and his daughter. Let me tell you, she was not happy about that, but we took care of her and. What did you do? Naruto asked, as his evil clone smirked. Let me show you. He super sped them to Naruto's office where the skulls of all his friends and family were hung up on the wall like trophies. Barry, Sisko, Caitlin, 
Jiraiya, Tsunade, Oliver, Felicity, Diggle, Linda, and Dr. Wells. Now these, these ones are special. Don't you agree? You're a monster. Naruto told him only to get picked up and have his head slammed into his desk. No, we're monsters, Naruto. Come on, I want you to say it. Here, I help you, we, are, monsters, his evil clone taunted him like he was a child. Come on, you know you can do it. I'm, nothing like you, Naruto said as he struggled to break free, only to be hit in the gut and thrown into the wall. Then evil Naruto appeared in front of him and grabbed him by the throat with one hand. When are you going to get it through your thick skull, Naruto, and just accept what you know deep down in your soul, Naruto? I'm not some illusion or mind trick. I am the real you, his evil clone said. The real, me? Naruto fought for breath as his wicked clone smirked. Yeah, I'm your precious hatred and every evil thought you have in your head. Your dark self, if you prefer. Dark Naruto boasted, only for Naruto to punch his elbow and escape. He punched Dark Naruto in the face after kneeing him in the gut, only for Dark Naruto to spin and punch him back. The two hit the ground hard before getting back to their feet and stalking around each other, waiting for the other to make the first move. You can't beat me, Naruto. Ever. Yes, I can, and I will, Naruto replied. Wow, we're really delusional, aren't we? But I'll fix that. You can't beat me, Naruto, because I am you. Every single dark thought, twisted impulse, or action you've ever thought of are done as me. I've always been here, and I'll be sticking around for a long time. To be honest, I've never had this much freedom or energy in years, but after what you've been through the last few months. Dot let me tell you, it's practically a five-star buffet. We're messed up, aren't we? Screw you. This isn't real. Naruto shouted as he super sped away in a blur of white and crimson lightning with dark Naruto chasing after him in a blur of blood red lightning. They raced and fought all over Star Labs at breakneck speed, but neither side could win. This fight, like previous ones, had no clear winner, so it was a futile exercise. The conflict eventually resulted in the destruction of the accelerator ring in the arc reactor. Punches and kicks were exchanged, but there was no winner when one final kick from both sent the other onto their back. Naruto moaned in agony, but Dark Naruto laughed. This just goes to show that even though we're geniuses, we're still stupid when it comes to winning. You can't beat me, Naruto, because I'm you. Every punch, kick, and move that Oliver or Jiraiya taught you, I know. There's nothing you can do to stop me, so just give up and let me take over. Both were tired and wiped the blood from their lips. Think about it. How much fun it'll be. Central City is going to be safe and secure because every single criminal is going to get the same treatment we gave Orochimaru. No one would dare rise up against us. And soon enough we'll have the rest of the nine join him. And what about my friends? What about my team? They won't accept killing innocent people, Naruto exclaimed. Oh, please. Don't try and fool us with your naivety. It's just depressing. Dark Naruto waved his hand and the entire area began to show their memories, most importantly the terrible ones and all the horrible individuals they've stopped including the villains. Multiplex, The Mist, Captain Cold, Girder, Rainbow Raider, Heatwave, Pied Piper, PK Boo, not to mention General Eiling and anyone in the government. They aren't good people. So why should we care if they live or die? I don't deny that they're bad people. Dot but killing them all makes me no better than them, Naruto said. We aren't. At least not anymore. I believe you said to Oliver about Mizuki. I'm just one bad day away from being just like him. Dot and you were right. That day came and I'm enjoying it. Dark Naruto roared before his negative influenced speed force aura erupted from his body like lava from a volcano. The red lightning flashed about him like wildfire, giving him power and feeding off his rage, doubt, and bad emotions. Whatever terrible force this was began to influence Naruto, and he began to feel all he had felt when fighting and killing Orochimaru. Sometimes the best way to stop monsters is to be one. So just embrace it, Naruto. We can really change the world, and stop anyone in our way. The lightning that circled him mutated into numerous replicas of the reverse Flash, who walked towards him in a threatening manner. The dark red sun of his nightmare mindscape got darker and darker to the point where all he could see was red. Slowly, he began to sink, and it was only a matter of seconds until he succumbed. When a small gleam of light burst through the darkness, scattering it in the lightning. All of Naruto's unpleasant emotions progressively faded away until he was back to normal. He raised his head to the light and saw the shadows of two people until his eyes could make out who they were. Naruto, Dad. Dot Mom. Naruto noticed his parents standing in front of him. Minato was dressed in a yellow button-up shirt with a white lab coat over it, with the phrase, Science can save the world, written in kanji on the back. Next to Minato was Kashina Uzumaki, 
wearing a similar lab coat. Her long red hair was wrapped back in a ponytail. Hello, my son. Minato gazed at Naruto with pride and love as Kashina was shedding small tears of joy. I'm sorry our meeting had to be like this, but it came up at a good time. You're not real. Neither of you are real. You're not here. Naruto only received a punch to the head from his mother, which hurt like hell. Oh. Don't be disrespectful to your parents. I raised you better than that databane. Kashina shouted as her red hair got all crazy while Minato was scared. Wait. Only mom would ever say that. Naruto gazed up at his parents. Is that really you guys? Of course it's us, she said. But, but how? You're both dead. How can you be here? Is this just my head messing with me? Naruto asked. Or maybe something brought us to you to help you with this. Minato said as he waved his hand which made dark Naruto and everything else freeze so they could have some privacy. I'm so sorry, Naruto. I never wanted you to go through any of this. The only response he received was a super fast gut blow that caused him to double over. Why did you do this? Why? Do you have any idea what I've been through? What you forced on me? How could you do that to your own son? Naruto cried tears of anger and sadness while Kashina just laughed her butt off. Oh my god, you did deserve that. I'm sorry, Naruto, I really am. Although I supposed it's of little conciliation if I apologize now after everything you've been through, Minato uttered. Naruto wiped his eyes from his angry tears and began to calm down. It is, but that's okay, I'll deal with it as I always have. Since you asked, I did this to you because I knew you could do it. I did it because you're my son. If anyone could stop the nine, it would be you. Minato explained. There's a reason I did this. When your mother and I developed the meta serums for the nine, we learned something. Learned what? Naruto inquired as Minato assumed a more solemn expression. That the nine themselves are just puppets of a far greater evil. An evil that has survived through the generations in his descendants with only one goal, to establish peace through control. They believe that only through their leadership can the world ever know true peace and so they have worked behind the shadows over the years go achieve that goal. The Nine was one of them, to control the criminal element of the world. Their goal, while troubling could never be made a reality even with all the influence and military might they could gather, until our research. Kashina explained. The true mastermind behind all of this used our research for his own means. Shortly before the accident, we found out that the research we sent to the Nine detailed how to create a unique serum. A serum to bestow untold powers onto its user. Powers the true leader of the Nine would want. Naruto inquired. What kind of powers? Enough that even at your speed, you couldn't stop him. Nothing could stop him from achieving his goal of ruling over everything, Minato responded. That's why we did this. In order to truly protect something precious, war will be wages. As long as there is love in this world, there will be hate. Some people will take advantage of that hate. To be a true hero means to confront true hate. Every single one of us must battle against that hatred and he embodies hatred like no other in history. If you are to eventually face him, this is what you must be ready for. How the hell can I do that when I can't even deal with the hatred deep inside me? You heard my dark clone, and it's still inside. What should I do, dad? Naruto begged. Minato placed his hand on Naruto's head like he always used to do when he was small. I'm confident you'll know the answer when it comes, Naruto. Because I have complete faith in you. We both do. Kashina stepped forward. You have your father's appearance, but everything else about you is pure me. That is a good thing. And your mind is superior to both of ours. If anyone can pull this off, it's you. Are you certain about that? If you're in my head, then you know what I've done. My dark version is nuts, but he makes some valid arguments. I'm not the person you recall. Naruto brought this up. And we're not the people you assumed we were. Guess it runs in the family, Minato said. This darkness within you is something that everyone possesses, Naruto. Oliver informed you of this. I know you're afraid of your inner darkness, but avoiding it isn't the solution. Kashina informed him. You need to face it head on. We know you're scared, Naruto, but it's something you need to do if you want to wake up. Minato added as he comforted his son. You're ready, even if you think you're not. I'm not sure I can do this on my own. As his mother and father smiled at him, Naruto said. You're not in this alone. They both said this as they waved their hands, and just as Dark Naruto brought up all of his negative memories, they did the same with his positive ones. His happy childhood memories include birthdays, science fairs, and family vacations, as well as time spent with Dr. Wells and Tess Morgan. After his coma, they switch to his memories, and he gains his powers. Getting to know Barry, Sisko, Caitlin, and Linda. All his victories and struggles as impulse and all the excellent work he did. We're with you no matter what. Sometimes I forget about all the good memories. 
Naruto said with a teary smile, I'm going to miss you both so much. Kashina and Minato hugged their son, crying tears of pleasure, pride, and despair. We are missing you, but we will always be here, Kashina said. My special boy, you have such a great destiny ahead of you. We've seen it, they showed it to us. But, as I've always said, if you don't like your fate, don't accept it. Instead, have the courage to make the necessary changes. We are very proud of the guy you've become. Remember, it's not someone's face that makes them a monster, it's the decisions they make with their lives. Failure is not a reason to give up as long as you believe, and we have faith in you." Minato informed him. As Minato kissed his son on the cheek, Naruto smiled. You're ready. I'm ready. Minato and Kashina waved their hands, causing dark Naruto and the nightmare mindscape to unfreeze. Ah. Look who's arrived. The two idiots who made us the monsters we are. I'm so delighted they're here to see their lovely little innocent boy turn against them. Dark Naruto laughed. You know what to do, Naruto. Kashina encouraged him. I know. As the reverse flash avatars reached out to infect him, Naruto's crimson and white lightning formed a barrier around him, keeping him safe. That's not gonna work on me anymore. Are you sure, Naruto? You can't get rid of me, as I keep telling you. Dark Naruto reminded him as Naruto took a few steps forward. I know. You are and always will be a part of who I am. I may believe you're too much for me, but you push me when I need it, and you may think I'm useless, yet I soften you. So you can forget about taking over because I'm not going to let that happen and you don't want that. Naruto brought this up. Oh, yes. How about a counter-argument? Dark Naruto ran forward at breakneck speed to hit him in the face, only for Naruto to grab the punch. One difference was that Naruto wasn't furious, outraged, or sad. Just calm and accepting. What exactly are you doing? I'm proving you wrong. My rage and hatred will not make me more powerful, stronger, or make the suffering go away. Naruto informed him. Then what will? Dark Naruto asked. Remembering who I fight for and why I fight will help. People can become as strong as they can when they are protecting something truly special to them. If I'm going to take down the Nine and keep my friends, my family safe, we're going to need each other. It's time to stop feeling sorry for myself and start growing. Naruto said to his dark persona as the red lightning began to dissipate. You had me at the takedown of the Nine. As the red lightning faded and dark Naruto returned to his normal self, he remarked, he grinned at the original before dissipating and merging with him, becoming one whole person. Naruto closed his eyes and exhaled deeply. How does it make you feel? Kashina inquired as Naruto opened his eyes and they flickered with white and crimson lightning. I feel good. Naruto replied when his nightmare mindscape cracked with thunder and the nightmarish aura pooled together on the ground to form a large scarecrow. Wasn't expecting that. Dot but I could use the exercise. Go get him, son. Minato stated. Kick his ass, Naruto, Kashina elaborated. With great pleasure. Naruto smiled as he started channeling his speed. Minato and Kashina smiled at their kid before they transformed into lightning. Minato transforms into white lightning, and Kashina transforms into crimson. Before it hit Naruto, the lighting merged to form the cloak of a roaring animal. A fox if you will. Which caused a huge flash of light that caused the nightmare scarecrow to shield its eyes. When the light dimmed down, Naruto stood there in a new suit. His boots were black with crimson embellishments on the shins. His pants were black from the waist down, but the rest of his suit was silver and crimson. His fists and forearms were scarlet along with accents around his biceps, ribs, collarbones, and the wingtips on his mask. Everything else was silver, white and resembled thin, breathable, and flexible armor. His mask was different from his prior costume in that it encompassed his entire head, with lenses covering his eyes and a mask covering his mouth. The crimson wingtips on the mask were one noticeable difference along with his new symbol. Instead of the strange arrow, zigzag pattern on his former suit, this one had a red lightning bolt sign in a circle like the Flash, but the circle looked like a gear to honor Naruto's abilities as a scientist and engineer. Overall, it was a whole new impulse. 8. Naruto stood there in his new suit while his mask retracted so it was like his previous one, covering most of his head save for his hair and mouth. New suit. Dot and I like it. The demonic knight scarecrow shouted at him, brandishing a monstrous looking scythe. All right, now it's time to send this scarecrow back to the cornfield. As Impulse accelerated toward the scarecrow, his mask reassembled and covered his entire head. It lunged at him with the scythe, but there was no way it could survive. As a result, Impulse was reborn. Mindscape has come to an end. To be continued.
That's it for this podcast. Thanks for listening to this video. If you did enjoy this part of the story, like, share, and subscribe for more. And thank you all for having support. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. And thank you all for having support. And have a great day.